Graham from GoFast here, and we got the production prototype camper on the Rivian. So there's three major differences with this thing. So we got it lower, quite a bit lower. So we're about half an inch off of that uh, moonroof. And then we added a fairing to the front, and then we tied into the forward roof mount points. So by tying into the cab mount, there's virtually no flex. And what that does is it keeps that forward cab over portion from ever potentially hitting that moonroof, which is a catastrophic problem if it does. So thankfully we got that all dialed and it's solid. We did one range test with and without this camper, this specific one, going from Bozeman to Idaho Falls and back, where we saw about a nine and a half percent decrease in range. And if you're not familiar with the area, that is all highway. So that's 75, 80 miles an hour, 85 miles an hour speed limit going from Bozeman all the way down through there. So that was a about a four hour drive each way. And we saw that nine and a half percent decrease in pretty calm conditions. So today we're gonna do a little bit of a mixed drive where we're gonna go around the mountains here in town on surface roads, kind of going 35 to 50 miles an hour, and then a quick highway pass. That said, today is super windy. So we're seeing consistent wind of like 15 miles an hour with gusts at 20 to 25. So we're gonna go through, test it, take this camper off, go charge it to 80%, go do a lap, come back, put the camper on, recharge the 80%, do another lap. So we're here at the charging station about to do the non-camper driving test. So the route we have for this thing is 60 miles, kind of going through the city, town of Bozeman, Montana, out into the mountains, kind of on some farm roads, and then back down the highway all the way out to a town called Manhattan, Montana, then back to our shop in Belgrade. And we'll replicate this exact condition with and without the camper for real world driving. So let's hop in the car and check this thing out. So the vehicle settings on this trip and power consumption on our end are all gonna be the same. So on the climate control, we have it set at 68 with the same fan setting. The seat is set on number two cool. We have the ride height at standard. We're in conserve mode, ride feel soft, standard regen. And we are gonna zero out the trip odometer. And this will give us our miles per kilowatt hour and how many miles that we drove. So that should be right around that 60 something mile mark. So we'll have some traffic conditions here that are slightly variable, but we're gonna do our best to maintain these standards to be as close as possible. So let's hit the road and start the test. In the loop without the camper, in mild traffic, but pretty high winds, we saw an overall efficiency of 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour. So we just finished the range test with no camper on the truck, and now we're gonna throw the camper on and see how it does. Now that we have the production prototype camper installed, we topped it back off to 80%. We'll drive that same loop, see what happens. In the loop with the camper in very similar conditions, both high winds and mild traffic, we saw an overall efficiency of 2.35 miles per kilowatt hour. That results in a delta of about 9.5%, so a 9.5% decrease in expected range. All right, so the data. It's really hard to get perfect data across such a small sample size of 60 miles, but what we did see was that about 7.5% reduction in range at that slower speed, that 35 to 60 miles an hour in that high wind environment. And then we saw about 11.5% once we mix in highway driving with a lot of big headwinds and crosswinds. So when we look at that compared to our data from Bozeman to Idaho Falls, and that being 9.5%, really what we need is more testing. The TLDR of all of that is that we're at that 10% range, which is what we were targeting or better. Overall, we're really happy with about that 10% decrease in range because it is taller than the cab. And when we do look at online data from customers that are running the bed rack with the cab height rooftop tent, they are seeing that five to 10% self-reported range degradation. The other big upside to this new design is not only does it look much sleeker, but that fairing virtually eliminates all wind noise. So because the vehicle is so quiet, you can hear everything, including, as you guys know, a lot of noise coming off of these side view mirrors. And really that's all the noise that you can hear. So if you get a big gust of wind, you might pick up a little bit of like a side profile noise, but it is quiet, which is huge because that's a super, super important design parameter in terms of living with this setup. So stay tuned, we'll do more testing. And it looks like we're still at that mid-September, probably September 15th for starting production.